Bro, the early 2000s were such a simpler time. Everything had color and pizzazz. And I think I'm blinded by nostalgia because I'll find myself going through my old video game collections and reminiscing on playing with the older kids because they always had the games that I never had. But there was this one game I could not remember the name to, but I vividly remember playing it. And I finally figured out what it was called. It was called Dark Alliance. And I remember watching the older kids play it and you could plug in a second controller and that really blew my mind. Like the fact that you could play this top-down RPG game with your friends. It, it was crazy. And upon my revitalized interest in this, I found out it's a part of the Baldur's Gate series. Nice. All right, I'm done yapping now. Let's get into some gameplay. Oh, I remember this screen. Human Archer, Dwarven Fighter, Elven Sorceress. Ooh. I think I'm gonna go human archer. So act one starts with you arriving at Baldur's Gate. You start walking into town when you're attacked by a group of thieves. They bonk you over the head and some guards catch them. The leader tells them to leave your body but take whatever you have. You wake up and the guards tell you to seek shelter in the Elf Song Tavern. You enter the tavern and start asking around about the men who robbed you. You find out from the barkeeper that the new thieves guild has taken over and she thinks they're using the sewers to traverse Baldur's Gate, which would explain her rat problem. You ask her how to get into the sewers and she says you can use the gate in the cellar of the tavern, but she locked it up. She says if you can fix her rat problem, she'll give you the key to the sewer gate. The door to the cellar is locked, so you'll need to get the key from Ethan over in the corner there. Okay, I'll go speak to him. You get the key from Ethan, who then warns you about your plan for revenge, but for some reason you have to get it back in blood. And once y'all see what I'm about to go through, I feel like revenge wouldn't even be worth it at this point. You traverse through the sewers and kill the rats. What is this? Dude, look at the water mechanics. When you return, the barkeeper explains how Ethan went to go find you in the sewers and got lost. So now you have to go back in them and find him. And throughout this whole process, you're fighting so many enemies and you're doing puzzles and all sorts of stuff. You fight like a mini boss or a regular boss, I'm not sure. Either way, I got my ass whooped. When you finally find Ethan, he tells you he picked a key off one of the chieftains and overheard them talking about a new mission that lies deeper in the sewers. He urges you to check it out. So, like any other hero, that's exactly what I did. Oh! 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 Holy shit! Oh, easy. Easy word. And again, you just fight a wave after wave of enemies, and for level two, it was a bunch of big guys, and then f***ing Jello. What the fuck is that? Is that Jello? Oh my god, it is! Oh my god, it does so much damage! There's two Jellos! Uh, yeah, man, you go through a lot of enemies and obstacles, like random steam coming out of the wall that does so much damage but i got my first piece of upgraded armor whoa he dropped something look at that padded armor plus one baby that's what it's all about that's why we do what we do look at that Ugh. What the f- I'll take it. You know what? The stats are what matters. Why is there an army of Jello? After traveling for what felt like an eternity through twists okay. and turns and steam yes. walls and enemies finally. and puzzles, I finally unlocked the three doors that lead to the crypts. You're faced with a cutscene of the Thieves Guild leader named Karn talking to an ominous figure named Lord Xantum and their plan to bring an orb to the crypts. Inside the crypts, you're instantly met with waves of the undead. You fight them off and meet a priest named Fayed. He asks for your help in destroying the orb of the undead. You fight your way to where the orb is residing. Once you're there, you're trying to survive waves of the undead as well as deal damage to the orb when it's not spawning enemies. Once you defeat the orb, Fayed catches up with you and thanks you. He tells you to go back to the Elfsong Tavern and that they'll update you on any new information they find find on who planted the orb in the crypts. When you return back to the tavern, you're greeted by a man named Jarek, a member of the Harpers, a group who vows safety to the realm and its people. He invites you to join the Harpers and gives you your first task as a member. Infiltrate the Thieves Guild and find out who is involved. 
So, once again, you go back to the sewers, where you find the hidden entrance that the thieves were using to hide out under the town. Once you enter, you see a cutscene where Karn is getting scolded by Lord Xantum for letting the orb get destroyed. This is also where Lord Xantum gets revealed for the first time, and boy, that is a face that only a mother could love. Once you infiltrate the Thieves Guild, you fight waves of thieves, and I can't lie, they do gang up on you, and they got me a few times, but I prevailed. Then you fight these weird, like, flower things that spew poison. I'm not sure how that alliance started, but I'm sure it's a good one. You pass through some obstacles, and then you're met with this room of, like, disappearing rocks, and you have to get to the other side, and man, this one one whooped my ass. I kept dying over and over. I finally got across and fought some thieves, and then guess what, baby? Boom! You're back in it, jumping for your fucking life. Okay. 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 Shit. Really? You're gonna make me go this way? Spiders. The deeper you go, the worse it got. I mean, look at this, dude! It's just massive swarms of every enemy type. It got so bad, I said, fuck the XP, I just gotta run through this. Like, look! You finally get to a room where Karn is, and bro wanted to sit here and give me his entire villain rundown. Like, bro, nobody's trying to hear all that. Put the dukers up! You get to fighting, and I can't lie, bro was really bout it. He deals a lot of damage. But considering what I just went through... All those trials and tribulations and you want to get me when I'm weak and low on potions? He seems like the type of guy to do exactly just that. And I died a lot bro, like, a lot. But right when I thought I had him, everything went horribly wrong. No, no. I don't know where he went. Come on, come on. <gasps> Are you fucking kidding me? Oh shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at his fucking hell. Damn. Are you fucking kidding Sorry, me? Sorry, Queen. Oh my god, bro. Hello? What? Wait, what? So yeah, you just saw Doofus delete his own game save and then gaslight himself into thinking it was the game's fault. I spent the next 35 minutes going through the seven stages of grief and decided to finally start a new character and carry on with the mission. It's time for a new playthrough! Aw oh, yeah, baby, new playthrough time. Give it up, new playthrough time. Come on, yeah, aw oh, yeah. Yes, I love starting all the way over. Yes! <clears throat> Anyways. I started a new build and this time I went with the elven sorcerers and bam, I'm all caught up. No harm, right? Right? Bro, that was so much easier. Right after you whoop Karn, you push forward into the thieves guild and pay Lord Xantum a little visit. So, you are the stranger that Khan spoke of. You humanoids all look alike to me, weak and fragile. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that, bro. Get packed up. Let's go. When you defeat Lord Xantum, Jarek enters the room and you investigate a map board together. It seems as though they were trying to open three gates around the realm for unknown reasons. He asks you to go through the gate and enter the Sunset Mountains, thus starting Act 2, baby. You fight a wave of enemies through like this desert region. I swear to God, if I say wave of enemies one more time. And then you end up at this dwarven mine camp. You meet a dwarf named Torgir, and he explains how this camp is all that's left of them. They've been oppressed by dark elves, so they retreated back to where they are now. You're trying to get into the mines to find the source of trouble happening in Baldur's Gate, but he says the mines are closed off. He says you couldn't get in even if you wanted to because their leader and three others went to climb Burning Eye. They were trying to light the signal fire to call for aid from neighboring clans, but they haven't been seen since they left. You start heading up the mountain, fighting enemies along the way, and this part took me a while because the game doesn't really tell you what to do, so I went straight to the top and I tried to thaw the guy out with fire. That didn't work, and then it tells you that you need a torch, flint, and an oil flask. I really thought using fire was gonna thaw him out. This next part took me forever because again, this game tells you nothing. I explored forever and finally found Buddy holding a torch and then moved on to the oil flask and the flint. I finally find the cave where the flint is and I got my ass whooped by these yeti things. And my dumbass forgot to save before I entered the cave, so I had to start all the way back to where the torch was. I finally snagged the flint and head to where the leader is and get the oil flask. He basically held on until I arrived and then died once I told him I was there to help. 
You head back to the top of the mountain and light the signal. Dude finally melts and you can snag the key to the mines from him. This is also where you get a cutscene of an ice dragon, and I can tell bro has been eating good. They don't tell you where shit is. I couldn't imagine playing this game back in the day and not having YouTube or anything like that to tell me where to go. My god! You travel through the mines and fight some dark elves and then you randomly stumble across the dark elf boss. You, an elf, a Darth ear. You dare attack us? Why does her boobs have jiggle mechanics? Why are you dressed like that when you're trying to take over the world? I got so many questions for you. Like really, that's the outfit that you chose? Really? No! Look at her health. Oh my God, bro. Let's go. After you defeat the elf priestess, you rescue a dwarf named Brogan. He's also a member of the Harpers and says that he believes there's another portal in the ice caves linking the mountains to Baldur's Gate. You head to the ice caves and fight a wave of enemies. And then this stupid fucking disappearing like black panthers with tentacles before reaching the room where Syraxis is. This is around the time where Dark Alliance started making my brain go numb because this is all you hear when you're playing the game. The whole time. You just hear non-stop white noise of whatever location you're in, whether it be the forest or caves or the sewers, and then they throw in a miscellaneous background monster to make it sound like there's enemies nearby, but it loops every so often, and if that isn't mind-numbing, I don't know what is. There's literally no other noises besides the fighting in this game. But I have to give this game some slack because it did come out in 2001, and for its time, I do think it's a really good game. You get to the room where Syraxis is, and it really wasn't that hard. At this stage, I had leveled up Lightning Ball so far that I could just range that and arrows and hop around to avoid damage. So bro got put in a blender. You go through the portal and end up at the Marsh of Chalimber, thus starting Act 3. Yay. Finally. You spawn in, fight some dead dudes, and then head outside to the swamps. There, you fight some lizards, and then you meet a friendly lizard named Slavos. He tells you of the Onyx Tower, a place where Eldrith the Betrayer resides and that she's sworn vengeance against Baldur's Gate. He tells you that his kin are led by a lizard named Sesith, and they are serving Eldrith. You fight through the lizard army and reach Sesith. At this stage, I'm wondering what the fuck I was doing with the archer build because the sorceress is clearly superior. You can move while casting lightning ball and you can shoot arrows in melee, so it's really the best of all worlds. I made short work of Sesith and caught up with Slavos. Slavos sends you to the Onyx Tower through the water stairs. This was the most intimidating part of the playthrough because the enemies here are really hard. Once you're inside, you push forward through Eldrith's soldiers, and this was actually a nice challenge. The enemies were hard and plentiful. Holy fuck. Right before you enter the Hall of Remembrance, you're met with the last Onyx Golem. He's way bigger than the others and honestly terrifying. When you kill him, he drops an Onyx Sword. I picked this up instinctively, but later you find out from a spirit named Keladon that her weakness is a sword forged in the Onyx Tower. He also fills you in on who Eldrith was before she died and why she swore vengeance on Baldur's Gate. Fighting Eldrith for the first time was really confusing and I got my ass beat. My lightning ball had no effect on her, but the second time around I realized the Onyx Sword deals so much damage to her, so she really wasn't that hard of a boss once I figured that out. And so it has come to pass that I shall die twice, and this second time shall be the last. I... The tower will not hold. You must leave this place. I ask your forgiveness. I let anger cloud my vision. I harmed those who had sworn to serve me. In all these things, great harm has been done. Let Baldur's Gate have its peace. I shall not rise again to challenge it, though it will doubtless need others such as you to defend it from others that wish it harm. Now, leave me to die. This tower shall be my tomb. Eldrith repents for her sins and tells you to leave the tower before it collapses. After you do, the tower explodes and you see Slavos talking to someone saying Eldrith is eliminated and you were killed in the explosion, revealing it was all part of a manipulative plan. You're sent through the portal and wake up in an unknown place surrounded by dark monsters, thus leading to the transition of Dark Alliance 2. Wow, so the journey's finally over. 
For you guys, it was only 15 minutes, but for me, this was over a month of recording, scripting, and editing. This is the first video essay I've ever done, and I put a lot of time, energy, and effort into this. I honestly had so much fun revisiting a childhood game that I had forgotten about and finishing it to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you made it this far, let me know what you thought. Thank you so much for watching, and there will be plenty more where this came from.